experiment with some acorn flour that Ian has made. Um, and Ian made this by collecting up the acorns, and then you take the you do you take the shells off the acorns mm. when you do it, um, and then leaving them in running water for about three days. It's like changing the water or running the water. Yeah. I actually, um, what makes that process even faster is if you grind those nut meats up into quite a fine flour and then it means that when the water goes through it there's a big surface area. So that leaching process with the water that is taking all the tannins away is a bit quicker. So really anyone who's got a wood with, with oak trees, oak trees probably and running and a stream going through, they're made aren't they really, these lovely little yeah. cakes. Yep. And a few blackberry bushes would help. And That's the, what I was thinking. I'm squeezing are, blackberry um, bushes into the into the mix. Acorns, obviously, a really uh, common it's tree. Naughty. <laughs> As it was um, in our Mesolithic period, we know that acorn uh, oak trees are a really common tree, and um, it's quite likely that people in this country are eating acorns in a way that we can't imagine today, actually, because there's n there's not that many other. Um, plants that have a high starch level and that's a really important part of a person's diet and but there are cultures still around the world that still eat acorns There's in Korea they're still eating them and also in uh, California in the uh, Yosemite Valley people were eating acorns um, right up until very recently as part of their diet so we and they're actually it's a superfood it's a really good food and even though um, I was cheating by using um, a, cup. a cup to pour the water on, <laughs> one of the reasons I'm making them in my hand is because I was trying to think what would they have made them in. So I thought I'm just going to try and make individual little ones in my hand to save having to find a container. But they would have had containers, they would have They'd baskets. Have they have little things like this which is just made out of elm bark basically, which is waterproof as well. And then they'd have had a a range of other containers like this one which is um, chestnut in a bark and we have quite good archaeological evidence to show us that they're making coil baskets not necessarily out of um, straw and bramble but uh, out of other materials as well that's one of the oldest ways of making a basket mm. oh I can't quite reach could you oh yeah I'll put that on if that's a bit of it has dropped off is it yeah. they do hold together pretty well though don't they yeah considering they're quite dry, it seems quite dry flour. I find that once I've mashed them up a bit, to start with I think they're not going to, but then once I mash them up a bit it kind of soaks in quite quickly. I think some of these slows might be starting to... And this one, I'm not even putting any water in, I'm only doing it with the blackberry juice. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, so that should be nice and sweet. Yeah, so this is the first one I've done. I'm just going to see what the consistency mm. comes out like. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all right actually. Look, lovely little cake. Should we put that oh. on this stone here and move the cobs off? Yeah, can you get them off? I'll just slide some of the ashes away from that stone. That stone's really hot, isn't it? Yeah, it might be a bit too hot. That's why I was putting them on the other one because they okay. burnt a bit yes, um, earlier. Thought I'd try a bit of a cooler one. It's well hot, isn't it? Yeah. Just to see what happens. And it's, it's quite good just doing them with the berry juice. I'm going to try another one like that. So without any water at all. We've got uh, some seeds in here which aren't from a tree, but these are from um, one of those plants that have been introduced to this country. This is the Himalayan balsam. But it's uh, it's got some close relatives in this country. One's called jewelweed, but there's some other balsams. I'm going to try a little seed from there. Do you want to try one? Are you brave enough? Are you brave enough? You just crush it. Just eat it straight down. Do you want to try one? No. Have you tried these? Do you want to? No? You just want to play with the fire. Yeah, of course, yeah. Do you know the plant I'm talking about? It grows all by the sides of rivers. It's, it's one of its names I think is quite charming. It's policeman's helmet because it has a, has a sort of funny asymmetric opening pink flower that looks like an ancient policeman's helmet basically. These bits are quite nice, even when they're not cooked. I know you can you can just put the grits into things like porridge, and they mm. used to make uh, just mush out of it and eat it as well in mm. the Native Americans. They don't really taste of mush at all, do they? No, lovely. But not unpleasant. Sort of mm. slightly nutty. 
Have you been turning these? I'm cleaning my hands. No, I haven't. Yeah, you can, yeah. yeah. I've made, another thing you can make out of sloes is um, fruit leather. So fruit leather basically um, is where you grab the flesh from the sloes or and other things like apples and hawthorns and make it into a very thick puree. You might have to sieve it first to get pips and things out. And it's also good to heat it up slightly, which um, stops it stops all the things in it that are going to make it go mouldy. And then pour it onto a leaf or some other shallow container, um, about I don't know six millimetres thick. And then ideally put it in the sun to dry, and it dries down. Have you ever eaten fruit leather as a kind of little bar, as a snack? Little strips of fruit. Has anybody ever eaten fruit yeah. leather as a strip? Okay, so you can buy it, but you can also just make it quite straightforwardly. And it and it's a really good way of um, just getting all the best bits from the fruit and then uh, being able to um, save them and store them and eat them later with all the vitamins in them still.